of programs in colleges also. So we thank you very much on behalf of Kajna. And uh, I welcome you, sir. Thank take you. over and uh, thank you very much, Suresh. Uh, yes, firstly, let me just check if my am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. You are audible. Yes, you are. Okay. Yes, sir. Super. Yes, sir. So, hello everyone. I can, I can see a, a nice uh, house for a uh, room here. Uh, it's great to see a lot of young people getting into the construction industry. I mean, uh, it's, it's probably going through difficult times now, but it's an, an industry that is always required for anything and everything. Uh, there are so many technical aspects to construction. I'm sure you're learning a lot of it right now. So, I'm just going to contribute a little more to this learning that you have been doing. So I think the beginning, I will uh, need a little bit of uh, q and I'm going to ask you some questions. If some of you can mute and reply back, would be great. So uh, what do you understand of doors? What is the use of a door? Why do we use doors in buildings? Yeah, you can, you can utilize the chat option so that, uh, that, can answer that? Yeah, we, can, uh, we can see and we can reply. Please use your, your chat options because a lot of people are there, 50 plus people are there. Uh, to search question, you can uh, type in okay. the message box. You can see, yeah. For security, how do I see the chat? So for ventilation purpose, sunlight to come in, air separation. Or not use for ventilation. Who has prevent entry of others? Provides access for rooms. Okay. I will see someone. Voice is saying your my voice is breaking. Okay. What? Privacy. Yes. So th th those are definitely some of the things. But what more? Why do you use a door? So it's a separation between two parts, two rooms, right? Am I on mute or am I audible? Sir, no audible. Mm -hmm. sir. Actually, a few more people were in uh, mute, unmuted. So I made everyone mute and uh, your, uh, this thing is audible. No. Yeah. So yeah, you can post on your chat. Yeah, chat. Uh, I, can, I, can, I can read your chat and I can reply back to you through your chat. Okay, so like we just now, uh, I think looking at the chat, you, you can see uh, those have a specific function and a purpose, right? So it's not simply some uh, plywood you buy, you put some laminate on it and you hang it up with some hinges and locks, right? So there's a lot more to it than what you are, what, what comes to the eye. So the primary function one would be you want strength. So there is uh, security. So security, you want strength, you want stability. Uh, you want some looks that brings a uh, good appearance to your house, right? So you want some um, good surface finishes, some designs then um what else do you want what else do you don't want i would ask me maybe put it that way yeah you might want soundproofing so soundproofing is a good uh property for a door mm -hmm. then fire rating yes so if there's a fire in a bedroom and you want to like protect your family out of it or you want to get some extra time to escape from a house then you might want to just close the door and prevent the fire from spreading to the rest of the house so that's why fire is a very important property what is something that you don't want probably? So something that you don't want is like something like over engineering. No? Over engineering is like um, weight. Does weight have any meaning in this whole construction? No. So uh, weight is something that actually you don't need in a door because it's just adding up. If you're doing about 2000 doors in an apartment project. So 2000 doors into even um, 30 kilos a door. That's the amount of extra weight you'll be loading up onto a building unnecessarily. So that means structurally you have to account for that much of extra weight. Yeah. So weight is also something that you don't need to transport because I'm transporting weight, making somebody carry up weight, etc. So it's a waste. So typically you will start seeing a lot of over-engineered doors in the market today. But, uh, a lot of these things are not required. I mean, these are not required by any uh, means at all. Uh, so these are some of the things that we look at for a good door. Now, 
coming to those i just want to share a small presentation i'm just sharing my content let me see how this works uh what do you see on your screen yeah i will reply sir it is just getting loaded give me a second it's not it loaded it's not loaded hey, it's getting loaded sir you can you can uh, switch off your video so that the quality of the, the volume will increase sir when uh, sometimes net uh, internet speed may be less sir. on the time if video is on uh, the voice will fluctuate yeah i'm just trying to search so i'm just trying to see where i can find the yeah. tool to turn off my mic i will do it i will do it yeah you can please turn off yeah i have done you can proceed if anything required i will speak to you yeah your screen is visible done. one minute yeah Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is better now? Yeah, yeah, better. You can proceed. Yeah. So now, uh, those I just gave you a small intro to those. Now I will just talk a little bit about our company and uh, what we do with those. So um, our company is a forty-year-old company. Actually, we started in nineteen eighty, so we are about forty years old now, and uh, we are also one among the large companies for woodwork in Bangalore. so we produce a lot of wooden products and doors is one among them that we do we also do uh, other wooden products like uh, windows wooden windows we do uh, wardrobes and we have another unit doing a lot of glass and aluminum our main factory is on banagata road on bangalore and we have one more factory in bomsandra that is just logistics about us the company is called kelichandra vinay industries so. now uh, i will skip these are just some of the machines and some of the things maybe when you do a, a plan visit next time you will get to see so this is what i was talking about in terms of uh, doors uh, what are the key features that uh, people look at in india so in india one of the things that a lot of people look at is custom made because in india we don't have a practice of keeping things standardized door openings and civil openings huh? so hence tailor made doors is something that a lot of people look at it's very important in doors there are different kinds of door cores the center of the door what you put in the center of doors what gives you all the properties for a good door so about 70 or 80% of a door what you see is this is the center filling of a door about 80% of the door is that particular filling that you see so that is what gives you all the properties of a door the remaining the border the wooden border and the elements like which cover the front and the back of the door are only giving you a decorative feel for the door decorative is the finish and the look and feel for the door right and the frame that goes all round is giving you uh, strength for your locks and your hinges and things like that okay so we have different kinds of cores that you will see in the door market today uh, the most premium uh, core or the best core that you see in the indian door market today or any of the the big names in door business is tubular cores so tubular cores is one of our best cores that we use okay from there comes the traditional cores that has been done in india for the last 50 years they call the solid cores solid core is nothing but you use a lot of waste piece of timber that you have and then you fill it up uh, in your uh, door to make it the core the third kind of core that's getting very popular of late especially in a lot of the european countries where they believe in uh, not to over engineer product is honeycomb cores so honeycomb structures are used it's uh, what is popular with doors is paper honeycomb and yeah the paper honeycomb is the third kind of door filling that is used to give you a door so these are all products that are used for filling and they give you properties like sound rating fire rating uh, strength stability etc okay so it depends on the type of door that you make 
you would you use a filling accordingly in which the tubular core is the best because it's got a lot of checks or uh, ticks in, in terms of a lot of these properties uh, cores like honeycomb uh, they have certain failure in terms of uh, let's say point load let's say you want to take a knife and you want to poke it through the door sometimes the knife can go through the door because it's only a honeycomb structure it's a hollow structure whereas tubular core and solid core you can't do that nothing goes through a door no so you can pretty much uh, stand on door jump on it nothing will happen to it yeah so solid core doors has got the whole issue of weight because you're over engineering the door that means you need to use better heavy duty hinges hardware uh, better i mean thicker frames because all this weight of the door has to be hung onto the frame so that means the frames have to be a lot more solid no so hence you are over engineering a product just to compensate for the weight then after that comes the edging of the doors all doors typically need to have a good edging so earlier days we never used to edge a door we should just take the paint and paint the edge of the door but uh, like even in uh, uh, any office you go to you will see table tops all the table tops come with edging just like that even doors need to have an edging because the edging gives it a lot of strength and stability the edge is where you see a lot of damages first appearing onto a product so hence protecting the edge is very important uh, the last thing that gives you a really good finish for a door i mean you can make uh, a very very uh, high end door a very very you know high quality door with the best of raw materials but having a door like that and you don't have the the best coating to protect it and to cover it and give you a, a good finish is of no use no because you'll never get a good quality door so so we use a lot of european lacquers which give us really a very very high quality door on our product it gives you that nice touch feel when you touch a door it gives you scratch resistance uh, sufficient scratch resistance uh, so that takes a lot of abuse and uh, of course it's not toxic because today a lot of coatings that you get in the market are very very toxic so i i don't know if you uh, recognize the smell when you buy a new house or you walk into an apartment you get a, a smell uh, when when they just painted the apartment up no so those smells are called vocs no uh, which are uh, volatile gases that come out from the uh, paint and coatings so the same is effective for wood coatings as well where there are emissions that come out from wood coatings as soon as you coat it and you keep it emissions keep coming out some of them are very subtle emissions some of them are very strong emissions so if you use very bad quality coatings normally if you go to a spray room your eyes will start watering you will have breathing difficulty and things like that so these are extremely cancerous gases that are coming out so we don't use any of these uh, low quality coatings and we uh, only go for european coatings which come up with very high standards of uh, uh, let's say environment friendliness no so the typical indian coatings that you will hear about are called melamine coatings so we don't use any melamine coatings melamine is banned in close to about 60% of the world no so now beyond this what are some add on features that we provide we have something called a wear and tear layer so these are small essential features that you should try to look at for doors because wear and tear is the bottom of the door so any toilet door if you use the best of best as well uh, you will see slowly the door getting eaten away at the bottom of the door so we have a small heel a special heel that we put at the bottom of the door that if, if at all there is wear and tear and whenever there is wear and tear wear and tear comes because you use acids very strong acids to clean bathrooms so these acids also start eating up the doors so whenever you have that happening you can remove the heel and you can re replace it with a new heel there's no need to replace a whole door now beyond that uh, you also need to cut the locks and hinges so we cut it in our factory and one of the reasons we cut it in our factory is because the hinges of the door have to be positioned in a scientific formula so the scientific formula is uh, it's based around the uh, center of gravity of the door so any product that you want to optimally hang up correct the door is always hanging on a frame so the whole lifetime of the door 20 years the product is going to be hung onto a, a frame so when you hang it up it's not that you just select where you want to put the hinges one on top one in the middle one at the bottom no that's not how it's done you have to there is a scientific method to find the center of gravity based on the weight based on the size and at those points if you go and hang or you correctly put the hinges at those point and you transfer the weight of the door at those points to the frame 
you are actually doing a better job at hanging the door to the frame. Okay, so our, our uh, CNC machines do that and we cut all these locks and hinges and give it to you so that the carpenter or the installer doesn't make any mistakes on site. We also have some add-on uh, technology that we give you. We have uh, door seals, we have tight shut technologies, so which give you better sound rating and fire rating as well. Uh, so if you really need, we can also do a sound rating up to about 40 decibels of sound. So 40 decibels or 50 decibels is like a very, very noisy street. Yeah, so uh, that much of noise will uh, come down. Okay, so uh, so if you have 50 decibels, that is a very, very noisy street that you're standing on uh, and you have a door of 40 decibel uh, blocking that sound. So what leaks through the door is only about 10 decibels, which is very, very minimal, which is nothing. So if I give you a door of 30 decibels, that means 20 decibels will leak or bleed to the door. Uh, so these are some of the uh, properties that we, we we offer you on some of these uh, doors that we produce. Okay. This is just a bit on the construction. The construction uses uh, tubular cores. Uh, we use pine wood framing all around and facing on front and back. Facing could be veneers, skins, the different kinds of veneer, laminates, different kinds of products for different pricing. So veneers are most expensive. Uh, we call them skin doors are maybe in the middle and laminated doors at the bottom end of the price spectrum when you look at it. Okay, and uh, some of the certifications of the, the tubular core, we import them from Germany. So they're all eco-friendly because eco-friendly is a very, very important thing that people are looking for today in, on doors, no? Uh, so I will just talk a little bit on e eco-friendly. Oh, I'll come to it a little later as well. What is eco-friendly? I'll, I'll come and talk. This is just a little bit about our clients. Uh, here you see some of the veneer doors. I told you about the facing. So the facing with veneer doors gives you the, the natural look of wood on the doors. And that is the most sought after door today with us. So uh, a lot of customers want this natural look of doors with one of the best wood coatings put on it because they want that nice touch feel to the doors. No? To make your apartment project or your uh, commercial project a very premium project, you have to use premium doors. Uh, that's one of the thumb rules. No? So there are different ways you can design it. With veneers, you can design it in like across the grain. You can do it vertically, horizontally, diagonally. There are multiple ways you can uh, design the doors. This is a little bit on uh, tubular cores and things like that, which you can probably read up on your own as well. Uh, some of the properties. Uh, also, the tubular cores give us a lot of guarantee against pest termites and boros because these products are not something that termites can eat. Okay, so that's one of the reasons we are able to abuse the doors also in high termite areas, you know, especially uh, Andhra Pradesh and things like that, uh, Chikmangalore. So these doors can be used over there. So the core prevents a lot of the termites, but wherever we use wood, depends on the kind of wood, you could have termites attacking it. Okay. So these are just flush doors with designs. There are so many designer doors. You can also customize handles. You can customize grooves. You can customize the veneer. And that's how you come up with beautiful door designs today. So even the use of frames, you can see some of the frames put out. You can uh, really make the door look extremely beautiful by using uh, very thick, chunky sections on frames. Okay. Uh, here you see double doors. These are some of the door uh, that you see. Split glass doors where you use a glass insert in the middle. Uh, diagonal designs, um, checkered patterns. Checkered is a very, very popular design that you can do on doors. Uh, we have also doors that don't have frames. So the, the leftmost image that you see is called a frameless door. So those are frame doors without frames. Uh, the rightmost door is something we call open grain veneers. So open grain is like you get the natural feel of the, if you run your finger on it, you can feel the grains. The torn veneers where you get a special effect on the on the, the veneers. No? So here you see some more doors of the uh, Prima, which is the frameless doors on the left hand side. Right hand side image is a handleless door. So you see a small insert is there where you can grab and pull to close the door. Okay, we also do high gloss doors. Now the other range of doors that we do are the solid wood doors. These these are the traditional doors that you have seen in the market. Uh, in India, at least, I mean, you've seen that from palaces onwards, we've always been doing this uh, solid wood homes. But today, solid wood homes have uh, become, a, uh, solid wood doors have got 
a lot of design aesthetics that have come into it. So we do a lot of um, European designs onto the uh, doors. That means the moldings are very modern. Uh, we don't use the traditional carvings and things like that. So the shapes and the moldings have, have changed to give homes a more European look to it. Now it's a very desired look today. No? So we do uh, flush doors and we do solid wood doors. Solid wood doors are expensive, but flush doors are a lot more economical. Between both of them, uh, there is no guarantee of warranty difference between doors. So whether you choose the most expensive product to the cheapest product, we don't differentiate on our product. Everything is made with the same quality standards. Uh, so with that regard, solid wood doors are not as popular with us as a flush door because pricing wise, a flush door gives you much better value for money. Mm -hmm. Coming to frames, frames is this next part. The door consists of two parts, right? Door and frame because the door is hung onto a frame. Uh, so the frame also has to have certain uh, qualities. The main functionality of the door, the frame is actually just to take the weight of your door and transfer it to the masonry wall. Otherwise the frame has got no other function today. Uh, today's frames are called pre-hung frames. So they don't, um, they don't actually add any extra strength or stability to your building, just the frame. So whether you do a very large frame or whether you do a small frame, as long as it can support your door and transfer that weight, the size of the frame does not matter onto your construction and civil work. So we use different kinds of frames based on aesthetics, based on looks that you want to create. Yeah, so we have very large size frames and small size frames. And we have a mix of both where we call the wraparound frame where you can get a, a very large looking frame but made in a very cost effective manner. So those are different kinds of frames that we offer. We also have solid wood and engineered frames. Solid wood frames are uh, the typical frames and the engineered frames are uh, when you want certain characteristic extra built into a frame. No? Now we use door seals. I think I spoke about earlier. Seals are small gaps are there in a door when you close the door and frame there are always like three mm two mm gaps all around but that small gap is enough for an ac to leak or sound to leak through no so we have door seals that are used small rubber beads it's like a refrigerator door when you close it it gives you a very tight shut uh so pre-hung frames what i was talking about so what happens is today doors and frames are installed at the end of a project they install like furniture so your typical method, what you were seeing is always you install a frame and then after six months, you would come back and install a door. But that has got a lot of issues with accuracy and installation. So today's frames are pre-hung. That means they are like furniture. The doors and frames are installed together. Uh, the site will have a civil opening created for the frame to come and sit in. You finish your painting, you can finish your flooring, you can finish one coat of you know, polishing for your floor as well. And that's when you can install the doors and frames. So the door and frame will come together, it's placed on the floor, on the finished flooring, and then you use a door foam like a glue and adhesive, and then you apply it into the small gap that is between the civil wall and the frame, the wood. It's a bonding glue with, between wood to cement, and beyond that you anchor fasten it at certain points, and the frame actually sets accurately based on the door. So there's no need to cut the door, resize the door, shape the door, etc. The door also can be fully finished, polished, and can be uh, fully assembled in one go. So this is much, much faster for installation. So when you have 2,000 doors and frames you want to install, this is a much more faster method of installation and a lot more accurate. Means every door and frame you can have achieve high level of accuracy compared to your traditional method of installation. So today, um, I can tell you all the big builders that are there in the market are moved to a, this method of foam insulation is what it's called, uh, which is a very, very popular method of insulation. So this is what I was talking about pre-hung doors. Some of the advantages of pre-hung doors is that um, there is no, you save a lot of time on shaving, cutting. So they, when they come back with the doors later, let's say six months down the traditional method, uh, you have to resize the doors because there are always mistakes. So resizing, shaving the door, resizing, cutting the door using blades is always wasting of time because you can't polish a door, then you can't cut the hardware. So in, in a, with a pre-hung door, you are already cutting the hardware. You don't need to shave it. You can edge it very well. You can polish it. So the installation is much more accurate and better. 
then it's much faster. And yes, of course, the last point is it's a predictable outcome. So that means you know what you'll get. What you see is what you'll get. There is no need for you to uh, play any guessing games with our products. So here you see the small, uh, the installation methodology, what I was talking about. You have a frame, you have a wall, and you have a foam. You see the green color glue, and that's what binds the uh, wood to the cement. Beyond that, you also use anchor fasteners. I showed you the position of the anchor fasteners. It's in the rebate. And the rebate is uh, where you don't see the uh, anchor fasteners afterwards. No? We put the hinges behind the screw so that you don't see the uh, uh, screw as well. Then we have arcade drives. Arcade drives is nothing but the beadings, no? the front and back beadings to cover up the remaining gap. So after you put the glue, you need to cover it up. So that's why you have two sort of arcade drives. One is the front, one is the back. Normally the front arcade drive is much bigger than the back one. The back one is a small one. The front one is much larger because you want the frame to look very, very thick and big. This is another situation where you want the archetype to have something wrapped around. You can see the difference. The, the location of the frame is at a different point in the same civil wall. You can see it moving front and back, right? Can you see it? So you can see, uh, yeah, uh, I think I just saw a message is the glue more than enough. Yes, the glue are very strong. Uh, they're imported glues. Um, just in Bangalore, I can tell you maybe at least 50,000 to maybe 80,000 uh, doors are installed um, every six months using this method and methodology. So this is just a little note about quality. What are some quality points? Um, everything comes packed, finished because they're pre-hung products. Uh, I'm going to skip that bit and come to the uh, eco-friendliness because today uh, you must understand a lot of people are very sensitive, especially architects and interior designers are very, very sensitive about the topic of being eco-friendly and so should every customer uh, because you don't want to be destroying the planet. We, we, are, we need to be very careful about it. So there is a very common uh, saying in the market which says now uh, uh, save the planet don't cut trees but that actually is not true to some sense no? so it's not cutting trees uh, no uh, you, you've got to save the planet and then it's, it's, it's not the trees you know the trees actually when you use eco-friendly timber that is conserved timber that is meant for preserving carbon dioxide because the trees and plants take in carbon dioxide they they're, they're inside the plant and a lot of countries have a methodology of using that carbon dioxide so you use that timber uh, which is eco-friendly uh, eco -friendly built. That means it is conserving carbon dioxide. And they they want you to use it for putting doors, frames, tabletops, make furniture out of it because the carbon dioxide should not escape into the gases. So they can grow more timber. So they basically, let's say, uh, like in Canada, they have 12 plots of land. Okay, and, and, and if, if a tree takes 12 years to grow, what they do is every year they cut only one plot. So one plot is cut and one pot plot will be planted. So every year one plot is cut and one pot is planted. So for 12 years, you have always something being cut and planted. So over the next 24 years, there is no timber actually being destroyed. There is no forest being destroyed because only one plot of land is being cut down. But in 24 years, just one plot of land. At the same time, there's so many trees which we have been able to reuse and take carbon dioxide, uh, conserve them as doors, frame, wooden houses, logs, picket fences, et cetera, no? uh, and, and, and get carbon out of the, uh, get better carbon footprint. No? So that's why uh, being eco-friendly is very important and how you cut timber and what kind of timber you use. So the selection of timber is what makes it a lot different. And of course, other things like uh, polish and coatings also help you conserve timber. Uh, door seals for air conditioning because you know a lot of homes, a lot of offices have air conditioning and they don't understand the amount of AC leaks that are there. No? So I have a small note which says that the amount of AC that leaks through small gaps in our doors, that's also the bottom of the door. No? If you notice the bottom of the door has got about 5 mm gap. So that is as good as you taking out one full brick from the wall and the AC leaking through that brick. You know, that's the amount of leak that happens to door uh, doors and frames. Okay, so uh, so yeah, that's, that's a little bit about um, a little bit about us. 
We also do a lot of things on wardrobes and wardrobing. Uh, that's another side of our company. Yeah, I think uh, that's it for me. I've taken, I think, about half an hour. So yes, if there are some questions now, I can uh, yeah, probably take uh, questions. Audience, you can uh, write your uh, question, uh, questions or queries in the chat box so that someone will uh, reply. Sir, you can enable your video, not an issue. One minute. How oh, stop sharing? What kind of a glue is it? How about the doors that are? I will read the questions. Sir, what kind of a glue is it? Uh, the question from Pushpa. Uh, the glue is like, uh, it's, it's, it's called a PU uh, glue. Okay, so it's a glue that actually cures with moisture. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so these kind of glues are a little different from your conventional glues which don't work with moisture. So it needs moisture. So you need to wet the walls and uh, uh, it takes the moisture in from the walls and it binds itself. Okay. And because of this particular nature, we also get a little bit of gap. The reason why timber moves, timber moves is because of moisture, right? So when there is a slight gap between the cement wall, the moisture that comes to the timber is only from the cement wall. Okay. And that small gap that is there and this binding glue, which is coming in between it, it also makes the doors and frames very stable. Okay. So it's a glue that gives us various properties besides binding as well. Okay. okay. So it's a PU foam. It's called a PU foam glue. Okay, sir. Thank you. And uh, Tarun Sai asked, uh, how about the doors that are used in kitchen are fire friendly? Yes. Yeah, so they are all all doors are fire rated. Uh, it's about thirty minutes fire rated. That's the minimum fire rating that we give you. You can go up to one hour fire rating. Okay. okay. What is but a, you need yeah. to uh, use fire rated materials accordingly. That means you need to use fire rated locks, hinges, uh, frames, etc. as well. Thank you, sir. And the next question is from Lingaraju. Uh, what is the composition or material used in glue in form system? Composition he, he is at asking about the glue. So the glue, see, it's a different, it's a chemical uh, question, so it's it's not as easy to answer it here at this particular forum. Okay, sir. So, uh, it is almost like thermocol, no? Mm -hmm. So, you can't break the glue, uh, it's 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 very hard, so you hit it, bring it, you can't, it doesn't break, no? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sir, so, it's a little uh, difficult, it's, it's a polyurethane, it's a PU, no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the other question is uh, from Sandeep, uh, NMIT College. Uh, sir, what is the cost of uh, approximate cost of a door with the frame? Roughly, is asking. So uh, it's about twenty thousand rupees. Uh, a budget will be about fifteen thousand rupees. A door with frame, a budget door and frame is fifteen. Uh, a decent door and frame will be twenty. We do doors up to about a lakh a door and frame. Okay, okay. And the other question is from. Oh, how to fix a door if we, it is getting damaged due to weather, moisture and other reasons? This is uh, the question itself, a little ambiguity. How to fix a door if it is... So moisture, yeah, so moisture is very common for outdoor doors. So if you keep, uh, let's say, a balcony door or a terrace door or something like that. no. So you have to treat it and build it for moisture. So it's very important to, when you build the door itself, the frames and doors, are made in a way that you are already considering the fact that it's going to be abused by moisture. Okay, now for toilets, there is no special uh, treatment required because the kind of moisture that we have in toilets are nothing. Okay, so when you have a bath, uh, I mean, at the most five minutes or ten minutes of steam is there and moisture is there, which goes away. No, when you open the door, all that vanishes away. So that abuse is actually not a problem at all for any of the doors. Okay. What is a bigger threat in bathroom is chemical reaction, what uses chemicals. But for outdoor purpose, there is a lot more problems because of rain and sun. So sunlight is a very big factor which causes a lot of problems sometimes. So you need to make rain drains, you need to drainage out, you need to make systems and grooves in your product where how the drain, the water should drain out and not come onto your surface and come into your house. Etc. 
So you need to use outdoor coatings, uh, which are different coatings compared to indoor coatings, okay. uh, which you need to maintain every two years, three years, etc. There is a lot of questions yeah, so we coat them. from the people. Once you are maintaining it, uh, you should not have any problems. Yes. Because we also put in windows all day. Yes. yes, sir. Your answer was deep. Uh, the quality checks done in those cracks, knots, etc. So timber will have natural defects. So natural, uh, as long as it's it's a defect that does not cause any, uh, I mean, strength deformity in the product, uh, they can be easily treated with uh, you no know, minor corrections. So. Yes. Sir. So small hairline cracks sometimes apply. A hairline crack does not mean the door is going to fall apart or come apart or timber is defective. No? So it has to be filled up with timber putty. No? <coughs> Sorry. Fine, then uh, is engineering wood better? Yes, it is better in some cases, but it can get a lot more expensive. So engineering is today a very very popular concept, but it is a bit expensive. No? Use engineering for strengthening processes. So when I'm using something outdoor. bend because of sunlight hitting it on one side it's heating on one side and cooling on the other side no? then we start using an engineer product and the engineer product makes it a lot more stiffer some doors base will touch the flooring after years uh, what is the reason for this this is because of the sagging i told you uh, the most important part all doors 20 years the doors are going to be hanging off a frame okay they don't touch the flooring so that means you have to hang it up correctly you need to hang it up based on the center of gravity it's always better and you can hang it up correctly it can sag uh how will you control expansion you have to leave some small gaps and buffer for expansion it's a natural product it will move timber i mean nobody in the world can tell you that this timber will not move timber will move so you have to keep that into account when you install it fix it produce it etc uh those bulbs due to moisture yes uh, all timber will absorb moisture you take a piece of tea could also dip it in timber uh, it will take in a little bit of timber but at the same time when it dries it will come back to original size so typically, if something gets wet, you need to dry it back. Which type of doors are best for longer times? All doors, we give you the same guarantee of warranty. So the cheapest to the most expensive doors, we don't uh, we don't compromise on raw materials. So actually, I don't have an answer. You can use any of our doors. It will give you the same life. Uh, you need to do the correct treatment for outdoor doors. That's the only thing. Durability of doors, uh, durability of glue. Uh, everything is made for a lifetime so the lifetime product in the sense it's the building's lifetime it is not my life or your life uh, it is the building so the building is built for 20 years of course you want the doors to last for 20 years because you don't want to change doors in between right so everything is made on building's lifetime okay okay, okay. is this door suitable for all weather conditions yes but you need to use the appropriate door you does not mean that you can use any door for any uh, condition Okay, so if, if you are uh, in a place like Cherapunji where it rains a lot, you have to use the appropriate door. Okay, you can't uh, just take cheap quality timber and door and polish and then uh, you will have trouble with it. Which timber material will you suggest for doors? Widely? Uh, the two timbers are two main popular timbers. One is Canadian yellow cedar, which is our most eco-friendly timber. It is used for may building log houses, uh, sauna rooms, steam rooms, etc. That's one of the timbers we use. The other timber we are uh, using is called red grandis. It comes from South America. The third timber we use is teak. Teak wood. Teak because it's an evergreen timber in India. Everybody likes teak in India, no? Okay. okay. I hope uh, you have answered a lot many questions patiently. And uh, it was elaborate for the people. Suresh, sir, you can have a chat with sir and conclude. Yeah, I unmute. Uh, yeah. Sir, during yeah. session, you just open the mic, sir. Yeah, yeah, done, done. Yeah, no, yeah. no. During the interaction, you should have opened it. Yes, yes, sir. Done it. Right. Yeah, yeah, done it. <laughs> See, I was having some opinions and questions to ask during the session. Please, sir, please. Yeah. Now it is all over, sir. What I can ask now? Okay, okay, okay. No, uh, uh, okay. Can we conclude, sir? Sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes. So thank you very much. much. Thank you very much uh, for the participation, sir.
Thank you. a wonderful presentation. Yes. Yeah, thanks for being an audience. I hope I was uh, entertained enough. Yes, enough. Sir. Is it unmuted? Yeah, I might muted. Yeah, sir is uh, hearing you. I, okay, okay. When yeah. you say yeah. it, yeah. Okay, sir. It was a wonderful yes. presentation. I think uh, if they have still any question, eh, we will write. They can them. ask. Then they can uh, just send it to us so that uh, we can interact. Sure, sure, sure. We can answer them. All right. Thank, call. thank you very much for your time. All the best and stay safe, everyone. Thank yeah, you. yeah, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Same to you. And uh, Suresh sir will continue the session. Sir, your uh, mic was mute long back, uh, and you are not seen. No. No, no, sir. Uh, you had blocked actually. No, no, no. I had sent a message only, sir. Yeah, I sent yeah. a message twice. Yeah, yeah. I, when you sent the message, I opened because the the disturbance was there. No, no, sir. You can use the chat. No, I, I, I am in, sitting inside a room. How there will be disturbance? Yeah, yeah. I sent a message during interaction also. Yeah, yeah. People already, Mr. Syed and a lot many people has messaged. There was disturbance. Okay, okay. Please. So at least uh, during uh, question and session, keep the interaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, can, uh, you can speak. Yeah, we'll have questionnaire on uh, blasting and uh, block work. No? Yeah, please. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can have question session. Okay. Welcome, you guys. I think you had a wonderful session on doors, which you might have not seen. So the ready-made doors are very, very popular now. Uh, this will have a lot of uh, working flexibility. The fixing of door frames and the windows can be done later stages. So the finishing activity of block work and plastering can be done. So this will speed up the construction activity. So what is the advantage of ready door frames? What is the advantage? Of, you have heard a speech, no? Can you explain what is the advantage of door frames? Ready door frames? The time is there, sir. What is that? Hello. The time is there. The time is saved. Yeah, yeah. The time is saved. Yeah. Correct. And uh, pre, -dim pre dimensions is available so that you can keep the openings pakka. Yes, sir. And another yes, sir. Thing so like, they can uh, be installed can uh, after the coat of paint. See, you can speak one by one. Please. See, you can speak one by one. Sir, your okay. voice is echoing, sir. Whose voice? Sir, your voice is correct, sir. One minute, I'll reduce, I'll reduce the voice, wait. One minute, huh? I'll reduce the voice volume. 